So over the past few months, we've been examining the way police officers can seize vehicles during routine traffic stops. And we discovered that during many stops that take drunk drivers and drug couriers off the road, innocent people can get their vehicles seized too. One particular situation caught our attention, and yesterday, its conclusion is still leaving more questions than answers. It is a bittersweet day for Romanzia Humphrey. She's picking up her vehicle from a highway patrolled impound lot. I'm afraid. I'm just afraid to drive it. I'm so afraid. Her experience with the way police can seize a vehicle has left her traumatized. Six months ago, she loaned her car to her son, knowing he had a revoked license. He was stopped on Highway 153 and the vehicle seized under Tennessee's civil asset forfeiture law. Even though there was nothing illegal in the car and neither Mrs. Humphrey nor her husband were there. That situation even caused the officer to ask for help. Can I get confused with this uh, seizure law sometimes? I'm just trying to clarify something. Even that poor trooper, he, he didn't know what to do. So that tells you something. We took the confusing issue to legislators in Nashville to try to get them to reevaluate the law to protect the innocent like Mrs. Humphrey. But since the arresting agencies get money from vehicle seizures, the issue died in a subcommittee because it was found the state would have to make up the money lost. That it gives the police an incentive to overstep the bounds and to be overly aggressive and to pursue people who really shouldn't be pursued. Battery's dead. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Humphrey worries that because of police enforcing the law the way it's written now, what happened to her could happen to anybody. A lot of people might take advantage of the fact that you should know these laws, but if they're not, if you're not privy to them, how are you going to know them? After our series of stories on the issue, the state dismissed Mrs. Humphrey's case. Instead of the $3,000 they told her she'd have to pay to get it back, she paid $1,200 in administrative fees. Now is the moment of truth. I said, that's my baby. He's starting up. There she goes. It is so welcoming. It is such a blessing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, you know. Attorney McGowan says a fairer way to do vehicle seizures would be to have any money from them go into the state or municipality's general fund instead of to the arresting agencies. He says until that fact is changed on the legislative level, police officers will still always appear to have an incentive to stop and seize as many vehicles as possible. Kevin, quick question. Are lawmakers thinking about making any changes to this law next session? I'm told that this it could indeed come back up, uh, you know, if there's either a change in the compromise in the amount of money that it might cost the state. But it's going to be a question of whether or not your personal rights are important or is balancing the state budget more important. Mm -hmm. Of course, you'll be on that just like you were with this. We're going to keep following this right on through. Beginning to end. Kevin, thank you. Great story. Great job as always.